This time on Finnegan's Garage, we fly to the beach to buy a Datsun, then we take it all the way up to a mountain to go snowboarding. Yes! And I go home with a limp. Let's go. I broke that bone right there. Throughout my long history of my relationship with my wife, I have shown her my affection in many ways. I have restored family heirlooms for her. Oh, there it is. Here comes the tears. <laughs> <coughs> oh, we have tears. We have maximum emotion. Happy anniversary. That looks amazing. I have bought her more than one car. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing here? It's our anniversary, baby. Uh, we just bought a running, driving, freshly painted, at least I think, 84 Honda CRX. Did you get it? No. <laughs> Dude, I thought I had it, and then some crazy person went in there and bid $16,000. Get the hell out of here. It's wild. Now we got it. Baby! <laughs> you! Neither of which she really asked for, but I bought them nonetheless. And she embraced them, more or less. And sometimes she even embraced me. And lately, I may have dropped a hint or two about a car that I may have wanted. It was subtle, for sure. And um, gotta be honest, uh, she didn't come through. At no point, uh, Christmas, my birthday, Valentine's Day, did a... Datsun 510 ever land in the driveway. Not once. So on this episode, I'm taking matters into my own hands. This is what $12,800 gets you in a two-door Datsun 510 today on the internet. Within a 250 mile radius of me and Georgia, there were only three for sale. Two of them didn't have any drivetrain in them. This one is fantastic. It is perfect for me. What you got in here are Honda Civic bucket seats that as any mini trucker knows, doesn't always fit into a mini truck, but fits perfect in a Datsun 510 and they are oh so comfortable. Gas gauge might be working, temperature gauge definitely not, speedometer for sure is not working. However, when I pop this hood, the engine compartment fully restored, my friends. We got the aftermarket gas struts, one shiny stainless, one black. They don't match, but they work. It's holding the hood up for me. That is a freshly, Rebuilt L18, I think if you go according to the internet, probably makes about 120 horsepower. But since this car only weighs about 2,100 pounds, spunky, really spunky, a lot of fun to drive. It is backed by like a dog leg five speed. Now a dog leg gearbox doesn't mean a dog box, all right? This is a synchronized five speed. They call it a dog leg because first gear is down here, second gear is up here. The shift pattern looks kind of like the back leg of a dog. Because this trans never came in this car, this car originally would have had a four speed in it, the shifter is in a weird place, it's way too far forward, you punch the dash every time you go for you know second gear, fourth gear. That part takes some getting used to. Front end has been lowered, it has aftermarket struts with adjustable camber plates up here. We got a ton of negative camber at the back end of this car, those tires are not gonna last very long but the front end alignment seems good. It's not pulling everywhere. It hasn't caught on fire yet. I mean, what's not to like? It's got rust bubbles along the bottom part of it. I'm not stressing over this. I will drive it anywhere. It's as if me and this car were meant to be. If that sticker doesn't say it all, I don't, I don't know what else is. There are no bumpers. Those are optional apparently on this one. I, I would never own a yellow car. That's just not my thing. It never even occurred to me to buy a yellow car. But like I said, 510 two doors are rarer than hen's teeth these days and like a fully restored one, 40 to 50 grand. Driver quality, they're kind of hard to find. Some of, they get cut up a lot, but this one here, it's lowered without being so low that it drives like crap. But I've driven it around the block, I've cruised the coast, this thing runs great, drives great, pukes coolant everywhere. I think we can get to the mountain, which is what I wanna do. I bought a car near the beach, I'm going to the mountain to go snowboarding with my kid, it's gonna be amazing. Everything about this thing, it's good, I'm into it. Let's road trip. So we bought this car yesterday and uh, basically put about 10 miles on it. Uh, we didn't film, you know, the test drive process or, you know, buying it from the owner because, you know, not everybody's cool with that. I didn't even ask. Guy was super nice. 
He was a retired law enforcement officer, seemed like a straight shooter. Almost everything he told me about the car is true. And so, you know, we just didn't film anything. Um, so this morning will be our first real test of the car. Before we go on our epic road trip, we're gonna look it over. Radiator's still full, so this here, and this on the inner fender is coolant puking out because there's no recovery tank. We'll rig one up later at some point, probably with a water bottle and a piece of hose. And uh, the oil, the oil is interesting. I like to look at the oil when I buy a car because it'll tell you at least something about how the engine is running. Um, this oil, it's fairly new, but it is dirty, which is good. I'd rather see dirty oil from a car that's been driven than somebody that changed the oil right before I bought it and then I don't learn anything. The thing about this oil is it smells like fuel, which indicates you've got possibly an overly rich running condition of the engine, maybe a little blow by getting past the rings, contaminating the oil, but I've driven this thing about 10 miles so far and it runs like a champ. The carb is actually functioning really well. Um, this coming out is probably from it running a little hot. This engine's been swapped. It went from an L16 to an L18. The radiator is not stock, obviously, and there's no shroud. And the no shroud thing is probably why this thing might be running a little hot and why it's venting there. Uh, we don't have a functioning gauge, so there's no way to know that. Battery's been relocated back here. And uh, this worries me a little bit. This is the ground cable going through bare metal with no grommet. Eventually, that's going to rub through the installation and ground out, which being the ground cable, no big deal. However, the positive cable disappears under the gas tank. And so... My assumption is if there's no grommet here, there's probably no grommet wherever that's going through, so we need to pay attention to that. Maybe jack the car up at some point or have a fire extinguisher handy. We have a spare. I don't know how well it's gonna serve us since it's already cracked and underinflated, but you never know. I have 100% made the transition from air tools to battery powered tools. They are a wonderful thing. And for you guys and gals at home, if you need a portable air compressor and you need, you know, an impact gun and a drill and, you know, whatever else, this deal from Milwaukee works really good. And I found that unless you're top tier drag racing, the gauge on this is fairly accurate. So you can set this, walk away, and it'll, it'll hit your target pretty well. And uh, we're at 27. I'm just going to go to 30 you know, for maximum fuel economy and let it do its thing. I love these old Minolite wheels. I don't know if they're original, I don't know anything about them. They just look right at home on this car because one of the things about these cars is they were and are really popular in SCCA racing and in Trans Am racing back in the day. The legend Pete Brock prepared one of these. It was the BRE car, red, white, and blue. And, uh, I mean, won multiple championships with somebody else driving, but, or at least I think it was somebody else driving, not Pete, but anyway. These things are lightweight, really well balanced, and they rip around corners. Start. Done. Obviously, that would have taken longer if it was a set of 37s, but... When you're, ma when you're mobbing down the road on 14-inch wheels and tires that only have a 185 section width, it doesn't take much to get to 30 PSI. Dude, look. Dots and chromies. God, when I was a kid back in the day, everybody stole these. I'm not saying I did, I'm just saying everybody did and put them on their bicycle. Make sure all the tires are good and then we're on the road. Our goal by the end of today is to get to Beach Mountain in North Carolina, uh, which is about 
360 miles away. But on the way there, we're gonna go through, ooh, squirrel. <laughs> we're gonna go through a drive-through wild animal park and maybe see alligators, which I'm excited about. So yes. right now, alligators. <laughs> yes. Oh, gators for sure. I'll be so disappointed if there's no gators today. I'm so excited about this because I know Joe is gonna love it because being a mini trucker, you have to like tiny cars too, like Datsuns. Always. Dude, All this right. has always been like one of my all time favorite little cars, mm. you know? Mm. I've always wanted one. So I've never owned one of these, but when I was in high school, one of my best friends, Shane Strom, built a 71 240Z that after he graduated, I bought it from him. Loved that car, it got stolen. And once it was stolen, I was like, all right, well, I've had a Z car. One day I'd like to have a 510 because 510s back then and today, huge in SCCA racing, huge in Trans Am racing in the early 70s. Like they're well balanced, they're little cars, the parts are interchangeable. Like you want a bigger motor, bigger motor out of yeah. a two, an S30, S30 car. You want a bigger diff, bigger diff out of an S30. Hell, a diff with a little bit of mods out of a Subaru WRX bolts into the back of this thing. Like yeah, this, these come, had it. Yeah, like th these cars come from the factory with like, I want to say it's 150 or 60 millimeter ring and pinion. You can get a R180, you can get an R200 diff, you can get them with a limited slip, like transmission. Like this one's already been tranny swapped. It's already, this would have come with a 1.6 liter, like about 96 horsepower right. inline four called an L16. This is an L18, okay, 1.8 liters, yeah. which gets you a whopping 10 more horsepower. <laughs> Dude, that's huge in this little car. You could have got an L20, which would have been uh, uh, 119, I think, uh, cubic inches, another 10 horsepower. You would have had like 110, I think, total, something like that. Yeah. Which again, like you said, it's huge in this car. It's huge. And uh, this is, I, we, so we bought it yesterday. I drove it around Hilton Head Island while we just made some video and ate some food. We really haven't gone anywhere in the car. Joe hasn't been in it once. But what I did notice is while I was giving the dude the money and filling out the paperwork, when I came back, the headrests were gone off the Honda Civic seats. <laughs> because he's a mini trucker, the first thing he did was rip the headrests off so that we could have low back bucket seats. And uh, it was great for about five minutes until I wanted to just do this. You're not supposed to do that while you're driving though, Mike. And I couldn't. <laughs> there's, no, there's no napping time when you're driving. Come on, you can't do that. I don't know what we were doing, but there was a moment where I was like, I didn't want to close my eyes. <laughs> it was a long day. Nirvana of, uh, yeah. So, anyway. so talk, go back, going back to like, you talked about like, these things are like, you know, they race them in SCCA and all that stuff. I actually have a friend of mine, Mickey Cohen, motorsports. Okay. Mickey is a very large guy. Like he is a big uh, dude. They call him tiny? <laughs> no, they call him Mickey. Okay. Well, I mean, when you're, when you're a very large guy. And his, <laughs> it's a cage and everything. And I looked at it at his shop one day and I went, Mickey, how the hell do you even get in that car? Mm. Like his back, his seat, he's looking out the side glass. Dude. Yeah. I mean, that's how big he is. But he absolutely loves that car and he loves racing that car. It is so wild to see a big guy get in a tiny little car like this oh, and go haul butt and just have fun. Well, so after having owned an S30, a 240Z, there's not a lot of room in those. This is huge. Oh like, yeah. It's got a back seat. I can take the kids to school in this. Yeah. Like I have tons of leg room, but it feels so small when you go around a corner. I think it's missing the front sway bar. It has, so these cars are four wheel independent suspension. They're McPherson struts in the back. They're a trailing arm set up in the rear with IRS differential, right? They just handle good, and they're so light. Like this doesn't, this engine doesn't make a lot of power. It's no, been it's been rebuilt. Doesn't make a lot of power. You can keep it floored S through the corners. Super fun to drive, dude. <laughs> Spunky. What's crazy is it's like so. So Mickey actually road races street bikes. Ah. Like he, so he's crazy. 180 miles an hour now. Shush. He's lunatic. But his real love is the little 510. Yeah. And it's crazy. These little cars with not a whole lot of horsepower can bring so much joy to someone. My wife will 100% make fun of this car. She's already, I've sent her a picture of it. She's already like, did you buy your little wind up car? I was like, yes, I bought my little wind up car. I'm surprised she didn't call it a clown car because it's yellow. <laughs> she probably will when she's on the <laughs> But she loves a manual gearbox. And once she drives this, if we can get rid of the exhaust smell that's coming in, she will love it because it's got all the right things. It's easy to drive, it's small, it's nimble, it's got a stick shift, she will absolutely love it. Her little fingers might not hit the dash. Yeah, that's one of the things. So this has a lot of the common mods for Datsuns, um, especially 510s, is someone has swapped 
a dogleg five speed out of like a 200 SX into it that bolts in except the shifting position and the shifter means when you go for second, which is up, not down, you ram your knuckles into the dashboard. So you're gonna get used to holding it like this, a little dainty. Yeah. And just so- Just grab the stick down below the ball. And well, and having said all that, it shifts so smooth that after the first time I hit my knuckles, I was like, well, I'm not doing that again. I realized you barely even have to push this and it goes into gear. Yeah. Like it, it is a joy to drive. I love it. And uh, I love the left hand ignition switch. I think that's cool. It makes me feel like we're ready for a Le Mans start, you know, which right. I think that's why I think that's why European cars back in the day were left hand ignition switch. It, maybe it's because they were, you know, right hand drive. I don't know. But I feel like if you're getting in the car in a hurry through the door, like you're robbing a bank and running right. away, or you're doing a Le Mans start. <laughs> Robbed your bank. It's on the left side. You can put the key in as you as slide, you slide in, the in. Seat, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Let's get. And by the way, I have already made a call about a new shifter. <laughs> oh, so I've already made plans in my brain to bend the crap out of this and get it away from Oh no. <laughs> okay. Take performance, buddy. They make a shifter Team take. for you. They make a, they make a the shifter Nobody for Nobody told me who would make us one. <laughs> he goes, give me, he goes, how much time do I got? I go, you got all the time in the world. <clears throat> uh, all right. <laughs> Just make one. So it already doesn't want to start. Put the key the other way, there we go. Are you locked? Oh, it fired right up. Um, I don't know if it locks or not, does it? No, I don't think Maybe. so. Okay, she's got a, she's got one carburetor. If you were in Europe and got a special model, you could have got twin Hitachis. You've got one, and um, I think the trans is real close to the floor because it. That's what's rattling. It rattles. I don't think there's a choke. All right, I'm just gonna let it idle. Okay, no. Oh, and that's the other thing is finding neutral is hard sometimes because you, you get in and you're like, like this is, that's fifth gear uh -huh. way down here, you know? And so sometimes you're like, like right now, I don't expect that to be neutral. That looks like that should be first because it's so far ahead of me and it's not. But basically well, you it's, just said first was down here. That's reverse, right? Oh yeah, yeah, then first. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Copy. So when you go, Second, you hit the ashtray, okay? When you go fourth, you hit what, I don't know, I don't know what would have been there, some sort of switch. You know? That's our 12 volt socket, dude. Oh no, this, this allegedly this oh. works. Well see, allegedly you didn't cigarette. get the upgraded DCB model where you got the high-end optional 12 volt accessory. <laughs> it only comes standard with one. It's cold blooded. Come on, baby. Oh, I fired right up for that guy yesterday. Yeah, it did, didn't it? He probably had it warmed up before we got there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do the put my hand on the motor to see if it was warm when we arrived. Right. Come on, baby. Well, we're out of gas. There we, go. there we go. There she goes. There we go. We need to put a manual choke in this little cable deal. Okay. That's easy enough. All right, I'm excited. Let's see how this rides. Oh, dude, you're gonna love this. It is like driving a go kart. What's cool is it's lower, dude. You know what I mean? It's like driving a little go kart, and yeah, it's lowered, but it doesn't drive like it's lowered. It probably needs a little bit of an alignment. I saw the specs, and I've looked at it, and you can tell the rear wheels look like they have about two and a half degrees of negative camber. The fronts look perfect. It does wander a little bit on the road. Does it? But it drives like an old school mini truck that's static dropped, you know, probably a little further than it should have been. Right. Because it's not, it's probably not safe, but it is fun. All right. All right. Does my map even work? You have service. You're not in SOS mode. Starting I am. To Savannah National Wildlife now this seems Ranch. like it's working. Your first stop yeah. is Advance Auto Parts. All right, we're going to go to Advance Auto Parts. It's spunky. It's slower. Horsepower. It's slower with two people in it. I can literally feel the difference. I'm not saying you're fat. I'm just saying it's slower. You have only 180, 70 pounds. I didn't. I, like I said, not saying you're fat. You can just tell that there's an extra 188 pounds in here. I'll All tell right, you what. Uh, what do I do? What's driving that? around yesterday, I could see like you sitting on that side. When you're driving, you can see the car does. Does it leave? It affects it. Oh, you're calling so me now fat now. No, no, now we just equalized the suspension out. Now we've lowered it some more. Yes. We're leveled out and low. 
It didn't scrape, but so like, if you let go of the wheel, it's gonna drift Got left. left it's, it's pointed left and drifting left, so you know, we'll, we'll deal with that at home. Yeah. All right, there's fifth gear. Oh, already in fifth? I think. I don't know. Have a huh? Yeah, the speedo doesn't work. The temp gauge doesn't work. He said the gas gauge worked, but he also told me the temp gauge worked. So who knows? So we should go straight to a gas station. Okay. Because who I'll knows? Take a look and see if we maybe a wire came loose on the temp gauge or something. I Didn't he say the engine harness was new? Yeah. So the engine compartment's fully restored. It he said he shaved. All yeah. He said he shaved a couple of things in the engine compartment, freshly painted. He said somebody put a new wiring harness together for the engine compartment. Yes, I remember But that. he said under the dash is unmolested, totally stock, which which is cool. Like, yeah. you know. The engine compartment looks great. Yeah. I like the car. Like the paint job is pretty mediocre, which is perfect for me. Right. There's virtually no dents in this car. The bottoms of the doors are bubbling. There's rust coming through. You know, we may or may not fix that at some point. But uh, overall, I'm like, dude, I want to take my kids to school in this thing. Yeah. All right, what am I doing? It does come down. Uh, we're going about a mile to Palmetto Bay. Okay. But yeah, if I ever did repaint this, like I told you, the uh, girl I knew when I was like in high school that had one of these, it was a baby blue color. It was the coolest little car oh. in that baby blue. It looks so good. Like Porsche Riviera blue? Yeah. Oh, this would look sick like that. Yes, it would. Black accents. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not like black. A bronze color, maybe blue with a bronze, little bronze wheels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. I was gonna paint the mystery project car that we've not shown anyone that color. But uh, I think that maybe this could be baby blue and the mystery car could be that, that mint green Porsche color. Oh, yeah. And then we could just start building a collection of Skittles. There's a Porsche purple. Oh, yeah. It is insane how cool that looks. Well, I, you know, full disclosure, I like the Porsche Raspberry from back in the day. Like, I, you I, know. I do too. I am secure enough in my manhood, dudehood, theyhood, whatever you want to call it, where I could rock a Porsche Raspberry, which pretty much looks pink. So, yeah, I had a friend of mine in high school. He had a oval window rag top, right hand drive bug, uh, Porsche right alloys, right all polished. 100% Porsche Raspberry. It was badass. I love sliding rag tops. I would 100% do one in this car, but they leak. And they're noisy. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they leak. They're easy to break into. Doesn't matter who you are, yeah. who installed it. They're amazing, but you I can't. I installed a lot of them back in the day. You can't put them in a car that you're gonna park in a motel parking lot in Gallup, New Mexico. Like no. you just cannot do it. No. My. One of my mini trucks, well, all of them, I think, had a sliding rag top and um, got it from Rick Freeman at Street Beat. It looked incredible, gas station. But uh, 10 minutes in a parking lot and somebody forced open a sliding rag top and stole my whole stereo system. Oh. They look great when they're open. Yeah, I used to do the back. convertible mini tops. Did all that stuff way back in the day. And um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Or did we cut out the back of the cabs, put the subs in the back, and port them through? This needs a speaker. We did so many things back in the day. It was so fun. I love mini trucking days. This needs a system in it. Oh, we need a gas key. I got it, I think. I think it's one of these. You know, it's amazing how that envelope I handed you from a 28-foot, fully enclosed, really nice race trailer turned into this 10-foot little car. Dude, so, <laughs> so this all happened really quickly, right? Like, I came home from a road trip, saw this for sale called the guy and it just so happened that I had sold my old race trailer for almost exactly the amount of money it cost to buy this. So yeah, you're right. We swapped a 28 foot satellite TV enclosed trailer for this. I gotta be honest, I feel better about this. <laughs> I'd rather have this. This is way more fun than, that trailer was so heavy. <laughs> this is light, I like it. This yeah. doesn't take up as much room in the warehouse. That's what I'll tell my wife when I get home. Baby, we got more parking spots. Yeah, I could get like a five-man tent and put it in my driveway and park this in it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, four gallons in. Oh my God, this looks like California prices. I'm gonna turn the ignition on and see if the gas gauge is moving up. 7.5. Okay, let's see. Is it moving slowly? Oh, dude, it's going up. Is it? It's at three quarters, seven eighths, full. 
We have a gas cage. Right on. Oh my God, we're so spoiled. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, and now we're gonna drive straight from here to a parts store to rig up some sort of radiator overflow tank. And then we're gonna go through a drive through Wild Animal Park because we're in South Carolina where they have beaches and swamps. It's a weird deal. I'm hoping to see alligators. This model of car, it's part of the Bluebird series, right? The 510 came out in uh, late 67, early 68. And these cars basically were competing with a BMW 2002. Yes. And they were really successful in rally racing, autocross racing, road racing. They were inexpensive, they were really light, they were fun to drive. The parts interchanged across most of the Datsun lineup, so you can improve these things with factory OEM parts. Like, and they just look cute, for lack of a better term. Yeah. It's a cute looking car. Even little 14 inch wheels. It makes all the right noises. It's got all the right rattles. I'm in. Honestly, for a car this old, <coughs> you open and close the doors, it's still solid. It's like, it's like an old BMW. It's a solid little car. Well, and this is rare because a 510 on the East Coast should have fallen apart thanks oh, to yeah. the salt on the roads. And, yes. But this car came from California, and so it's in remarkably good shape. Like, you look under the bottom of it, it's not falling apart. It's, I'm stoked. Couldn't be happier with this thing. If you guys are 510 fanatics, you might know this car because it came from the West Coast. I believe there's a build thread on, on Ratson.net. All right, so we got a full tank of gas. We have oil. I put air in the tires. Next stop is either a parts store or a drive through Wild Animal Park. I don't know which comes first. Probably the parts store. Yeah, I think it's on the right. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to see alligators. I know, dude. Uh, we need bacon. I want little baby ones. I don't need the big gator. The little baby alligator. The allig can alligators jump? Like, can I get through the window? Can they tear the door off the car? Because I feel like if an alligator is coming, it's it's going to be on your side. It won't be mine. Not if I hang bacon on your door. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible way to go out. Two idiots buy a pound of bacon and get eaten by an alligator. I would, you know what? I'd be totally okay if an alligator chewed the door off the car, but we survived. I'd be fine with that. Great story. Speed limit is 55. We're getting past. My ear says this is about 27, 2800 RPM, but I have no idea how fast we're going. 56, all right. We are going the legal speed limit right now. So calibrate your ear. This is what 56 sounds like. Yeah. We've left Hilton Head and we're headed inland to the Savannah National Wildlife Park, which I guess we can drive through it. Yeah. So we, that's how I want to see alligators, It's from the safe confines of a little tiny Datsun 510. I feel like we could outrun them if it gets, you know, weird. I don't think they're all that fast. I could be the, wrong. The car or the alligators? No, both. I believe the top speed of these when they were new was like 98 miles an hour and they had 96 horsepower. And a four speed? And a four speed. That thing must have been singing. We, yeah, we have one more gear, but I don't know if the rear end is stock or not, but we have one more gear. I don't know what any of the ratios are, but I'm thankful it's a five speed right now because I can only imagine how loud this would be with a four speed. Oh yeah. Because you figure, on Savannah. 1970, the national speed limit was 55. Because you know, that was like, I think 70 or 71 was the first year of the Cannonball Run, which was a protest basically against the national speed limit. Rock Gates wanted to prove to people that thanks to the pretty good road system we had in America, that the 55 mile an hour national speed limit was just an arbitrary, stupid number, and that humans could drive way faster than that safely, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if that's ultimately what the Cannonball Run ended up being, other than, you know, a bunch of lunatics seeing who could break the record. But the first one was to prove a point. And I feel like they did that. Like in the history of the Cannonball Run, like the first oh, yeah. five years, I think there was only one accident and it didn't involve, you know, civilians. It involved a, a limousine flipping over in Texas. It needs a beep beep. 
tell people to get out of the way. I wonder if we can get an air horn at the auto parts store. Don't we legally have to have one? Uh, yeah, I think you're supposed to have a horn, a noise making device. You know, our turn signals are busted, but I got a right arm, that works. For you younger guys that haven't got a license yet or taken a driver's test, this is satisfactory if you don't have turn signals. Like, literally, this is stop, left, right, stop, like, that all works. Um, yeah. Remember how I got pulled over in the C10? Yeah. He gave me hell because I didn't turn, didn't signal. Yeah, this, and I don't this. think the C10 signals were working. Yeah, they, they didn't work. No. And I and I half-assed my arm out the window, kind of, and I knew it. As I, when I finally realized, I think that's a cop behind me, I kind of went. <laughs> I go, you no, know, I signaled and I put my arm out. He goes, well, I didn't see you. I go, but I did. <laughs> yeah, that, that truck, uh, not only do the signals not work, but you sit so low in it that it's hard to get your arm out yeah. to do that. You're like, you're, you're, you're giving the T-Rex like signal. I went like this. You're like a hey. T-Rex going, left turn, left turn. I gave, it an, I gave it an honest effort. Yeah, and you see that cop? Come on. Right. <laughs> and he did ask if I saw him. I go, well, obviously <laughs> not if I just went through the gears on this truck. <laughs> yeah, that truck is not quiet. I love this part going through here. This is like, like such commercial. the coolest part of being down here. I heard a folk tale last weekend about how the trees got the moss. And it's not considered moss. They call it witch hair. <laughs> and they call it witch hair because apparently way, way back in the day, oh, roll it, what is up? Way, way back in the day, when they first started hanging witches from these trees down here, the moss never showed up until after they started hanging the witches. So the moss is apparently like the witch's spirits. It is sketchy looking. Even before you told me that, I was like, I'm not into that moss, man. Like you'll have a perfectly nice pine tree and then you'll just have this nasty, moldy looking gray, you know, well, funky hair. tree growing off the trees next to it. Yeah. And you know, But here's the thing that does it, it does it only hangs from like, I don't know, what are they like oak trees or whatever? I don't know. It doesn't hang from the pine trees. It's only a certain type of tree. Probably a tree strong enough to hang a witch from. Oh dun dun dun. I mean pine trees aren't very strong, so you're trying to hang a body from that, it's gonna break a branch. We made it! Not a lot of turning radius, that's full lock. Really? That's it right there. That's kind of interesting. Oh, uh, the diesel. I think we might have too much timing. We might have too much timing. Should we buy a timing light or just worry about it when we get home? Ah, worry about it when we get home. <laughs> all right, so our radiator is puking all over our freshly restored engine compartment. We cannot have that, so we're going to make our own recovery tank with this here water bottle and a hose. Mm. Don't, we need to rinse off. Don't drink all that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll clean her off. Because I'd hate for actual coolant to ruin the finish of this. It's the shangiest part of the car. I know, it's nice. All right. So if you ever get real desperate, all you do is uh, get yourself a water bottle and a knife. Try not to stab yourself and just put a hole through the cap of the water bottle. I like to make an X. And then... Uh, Shove the hose in it. And then you can just zip tie or tape the water bottle to the core support and boom. If the hose goes in far enough, and if you have spare coolant, if we were to put coolant in here above the limit of the hose, above the bottom of it, say fill it up to about here, then this isn't just a puke tank, it's a recovery tank. It'll fill it and when the thing cools off, it will suck it back, back up in and fill the radiator back up. So I think we got to do that. Let's unthread the cap. We'll put some coolant in there because he gave us a bottle. Yeah. And uh, we'll make a recovery tank out of this. Got to make sure the bottle's opened up right. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get you wet. I'd feel bad.
Okay. I feel like, I feel like we could have made this with a Jack Daniels bottle. Uh, where's your cap? Sweet. We're good. All right. And we're just gonna probably have to trim this. I'll dry off the engine compartment. Maybe we should have longer. You know? It's too bad whoever painted the engine compartment weren't the same people that painted the outside of the car. Because the engine compartment is way nicer than the outside of the car. But then, if the outside of the car was as nice as the engine compartment, I wouldn't want to drive the car as much because it'd be too nice. Just shine it up good. Okay. Mike, can I see your knife, please? It's a fresh knife. It's definitely sharp. It is. If we would have gotten the two feet of hose, we could have just set it down there on the frame and did it to the bottom loop, but. Ah, this will be fine. All right, seems legit. Onward, let's go see alligators. needs a hydraulic drift brake handle oh yeah because like right now i could just grab be grabbing a handful of e-brake and sliding into this place right they would love that there we go apparently he didn't like our turn i guess not this is uh Probably a good idea not to walk your dog. Yep, not bringing my puppies here. Oh my God, Belle would go nuts. Oh dude, Belle would She would go crazy. She would wear herself out trying to hunt through here. She'd go right in the swamp and swim after everything, including the alligator, and it would not work out well for her. All right, Savannah National Wildlife Refuge. Prohibitive activities, no camping, no fires, no pets, no collecting plants or animals, no feeding or harassing the wildlife. No, no drones. drones. What if you're drone adjacent? You know, you're not next to it. Oh, it's an off-road trail. All right. They used to rally car race these things, so I have no problem going off-road. See any big lizards down there, Mike? I'm looking for prehistoric ones. Haven't found them yet. I, I want to ask, why did the alligator cross the road? I really hope it happened so I can say that. <laughs> All right, so what animals have they got here? You got a poster to tell us. I do. What are we going to see? They have swallow-tailed kite, northern shoveler ducks, none of these sound white deadly. ibis, a Mississippi kite, tree swallow, black-bellied whistling duck, purple gallon new, newy. I don't know. I don't hear bobcat or alligator. I'm not on that page yet. Oh. Okay. Uh, blue wing teal. Red winged blackbirds, cattle egret, ring neck duck, blue herrings, little blue herrings. You see any alligators? I wanna wrestle them. Come on, let's get them. We're going to find an alligator. Because the gators wouldn't come to us, they were afraid of the car, so we're gonna go to them. 
you find one? Oh, dude, I see a tail. Oh my God, look at. Whoa. We walked past one? Oh my God. I've never. I've never seen a live alligator. He like does not care that we're here. No. Whoa. Does Don't get any closer now because those things are fast. Oh, his eye blinked. He shut his eye. Oh my God. I've never been this close to a prehistoric lizard in my life. Except one time on Roadkill, it was a little baby one that had its mouth taped shut. I feel like it was no big deal. This guy could eat us. This guy could drag us in there and take us down to the death roll. Wait, Dad, Dad, hold this. I want to get the video. Oh my gosh, he blends in so well. We're about to high five each other, gator style. <laughs> Mom, we got two of them. They're Look at, he's going after the other one. Hey. Oh, 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 we better see a fight, aren't we? Oh, oh he's, he's running. Yeah, look at. fast. Yeah, look how fast they're. Yeah, they're just chasing that other one, dude. That guy boned out. Look at him. Oh yeah. Look how fast he's going. Yeah. He's going like three miles an hour. That was super cool. I've never seen an alligator in my life. Dude, we were close. And that, uh, I guess that's not the big ones. There's big ones further up. Yeah. She said there's a couple twelve footers. Glad there's not a gator chasing us because I can't get the ignition key to work. <laughs> there we go. Oh. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there's alligators. Oh, there we go. Could reupholster the dash in this and gator. Play our cards right. That would be kind of sick. <laughs> I've seen a car that had. It's dash upholstered and gatored, and it had a gator head flushed into the it, dash. It flushed into it. I've seen that before. And then it had a, it was a, it was a third gen Camaro, and then it had a Twix motif on the outside of the. <laughs> it was funny as all hell. They got orange beaked birds, whatever those are. I'm not sure what they are. Let's see. What's our I thing don't know say? why like birds don't do anything for me when there's gators nearby. Birds fly themselves. All right, pretty cool. Those look like black bellied whistling ducks. Is what those were. Sounds cool. Yeah. Kind of looks like that, right? Yeah. Sure. Black belly boosting ducks. They got a huge orange beak, though, that's for sure. Yeah, free tour. Apparently, at this uh, little porta potty here, there's a cottonmouth that likes to hang out right here. So the lady was going to come over here and say hi to the cottonmouth, she said. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, that's what I said. I, said, I asked her, I said, so uh, you're telling me not to, um, yeah. not to use water body? Don't do it. She says, oh, no, he's just a little one. I go, still. Maybe number one, but definitely not number two. Oh, turtles. Is that turtles? On top of the log. Oh, rad. Two turtles. Best friends hanging out on the log. Here's the turtles. Hey, Mr. Turtles. It's extra swampy over here. What do we got going on? From what I'm being told, this is old blue. Apparently he has a blue eye. Mike, you want to get close enough to see if he's got a blue eye? I do not. I'm going to take your word for it, brother. You want to know a fun fact about alligators? I do. I Most love fun facts. Of them. Most of them will live to be over 100 years old, which means there's a good chance that they will see you later. <laughs> got dad jokes. Dad jokes for days. Gator jokes. Later, Gator. Baby. We're looking for big ones, but we found a baby alligator. Whoa. That's a baby. baby alligator. He's so tiny. This He's cool. Look at that. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that I want to keep. Yeah, that's the kind of guy that I want to keep, too. But my parents would... Alligator tracks. Those are gator tracks. Those are gator tracks, Mom. A little close. We are about to die. We're on the dangerous path right now. <laughs> This is death.
never seen them before. Let's uh, get out of here, get lunch, and drive down mountain. Yeah, drive up a mountain, which I have a feeling we'll be doing in the dark, so hopefully the headlights work. <laughs> if not, we'll be duct taping some flashlights right to the hood of this thing. Well, I tested them yesterday before we left, and they didn't turn on. We had illumination? Yes. Swing it. Clear. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll find a little spot to turn out of here. A little bit too much. Huh? Oh, the fender's okay. I don't think I got the fender. I think it was under it. Or did you feel it right there? I don't know. Whatever it was. <laughs> There's a turn out though. Whatever it was, it was unfortunate. Hours to go, boys. Let's do this. How's she running? Running great. All right. Oil light came back on when we got off the freeway. When it comes to an idle, but when we left Wendy's, it was off. So I think it's a temperature thing. It's interesting. It's got oil. It's full. Yeah. And it doesn't look bad. It's also got electrical problems, so the oil light coming on and off might be irrelevant. You know. Currently, you've got a. Uh, you got a turn signal lit up full time as your running light, yes. and, then, uh, and then a running light there. And then you hit the brakes, that one goes dim, and this one goes bright. Yeah, yeah. Cigarette lighter does not work, so we have no power to power anything in there. And uh, the side marker on the fender does not light up, but if you turn the key on, that white light under the headlight in the corner lights up. Now I'm about to stress myself out and let Jordan drive. Jordan, you gonna well, wheel, you gonna hey, wheel gonna this whip or what? I'm gonna roll the inside camera. Uh, I'm gonna roll the inside camera so I can watch him and listen to him grind gears. I it's grind it's virtually gears. impossible to grind these gears. It's a synchronized oh, transmission, and it and it shifts like butter. I think. Why well, you gotta I, bring up old stuff? If I can drive dumpster fire, I think I can drive this. We've been on the road all day. I'm getting cranky. <laughs> oh, getting hangry or what? No, Mike. We, we need a name. Salad. We need a name for this stuff. We just ate. Car needs a car needs a name. It, it does. does. A lemon. I named it mustard. <laughs> lemon. Mustard, What'd you name it? Mustard. Let's name her Poppy. Why? Because poppies are yellow like this, man. No. Alright, we're losing the sun. That's too innocent. <laughs> Does he have the clutch in? Yeah. Just, hey, just jiggle the key. All the way, right? Just jiggle the key. It's not the car. It's the key. Remember, it's been doing this. Yeah, it wasn't even clicking. Clutching all the way. <coughs> key on, key off, key on, key off. Does it turn all the way? Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you just do? That thing freaking like did the full 360. Here. Mm. Let's check our battery. Tight? Yeah. Yep. Mr. Starter. Oh, well, it's loose. That's not helping things. Let's grab some tools. Top alternator. Well, that's the cable from the battery. It runs right. through the car. Let me charge back over the alternator. And there's our solenoid wire. Which we'll take it on. We'll put it back off. Let's see. Try it again, Jordan. Uh, 
cooking hot. It's not even lighting up over here. Let's hit it with a hammer. Chase truck toolkit. Give me this all. Let me beat it. Bam, bam. Before you try troubleshooting anything involving a starter, hit it with a hammer. Sometimes that works. Try it again. Gotta put the clutch in. <laughs> Off the phone. <laughs> Fixed. Nope. Click it. There we go. Okay, this now goes with the keys to start the car. Right. <laughs> well, this is now our alarm system. <laughs> I'll shut the trunk. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, on the road again. You got this. E-brake. Turn off, turn off, turn off the car. Turn off the car. Turn off the car now. Oh. Pop the hood. Pop the hood. Jordan, jump out, open the trunk, and disconnect the battery. Hurry, Jordan. That's an electrical fire. I smell it. Jordan, give me the keys. We have electrical fire. Not that key. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, battery's disconnected. What uh, what was on fire? Um, we've got issues right here off of this relay. Whatever's coming in and out of here, we got a bare wire right here. Oh. See how it melted? Oh. It, and it, everything these? was kind of stuck down in this corner. Why so are, yeah, why are these just dangling? Well, I'm wondering if uh, they got pitched underneath this uh, shock. It's all really warm. Okay. <clears throat> well. All right. Uh, what'd you do, Jordan? <laughs> so what had happened was I let Jordan drive. And the next thing I know, smoke came out of the car. It's weird. Uh, it's not his fault. Um, we've suspected the wiring in this car from the get-go. Um, you know, it's got weird things going on with the taillights. Key switch doesn't always want to work. You know, there's just things about it. It has a reasonably good chance of not catching on fire. It hasn't caught on fire yet. I mean... Remember our side light was working? This side's a little melted, too, over here. Wow. It this, doesn't this seem is, to be the headlights, it's these running light ones. This is supposed to be a brand new harness. Yeah. But stuff like this where it's just it could be chafing. Here, it's just chafing and chafing and chafing and like it's not well, secured up in here, you know? Pretty much the whole front of the harness is melted, unfortunately. But it looks like it's only the running lights. Maybe that's the circuit that was... Uh, Shorting? Yeah, except the car wouldn't start. That's, there's no coincidence there. By a 510, they said. It'll be fun, they said. It has been fun. <laughs> it has been. Yeah. I'm not even upset about this. We're still snowboarding tomorrow, boys. <laughs> That's if we get to the hotel tonight. Those are two separate things. Whether we make it to the hotel or tonight or not, we're still snowboarding tomorrow. What I want to know is why didn't it pop a fuse or something for the parking lake circuit if that's the one right. that was melting? The guy I bought this car from was going on and on about how, like, this dude, this guru wired this car. And uh, it's very possible that guy did a killer job and that grommet fell out of the firewall and just, you know, months of driving around with it rubbing and chafing is what did this. 
feel bad if that dude's hard work got wasted over something like that. Oh yeah. See right now we got wires melted together because the insulation insulation is gone. That one will melt it all the way up into up the into socket. The, yeah. Look, so we got a green wire melted to a red wire. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's spliced, that's spliced together. But then you got that melted to it, that melted to it. I wonder how far in this nightmare goes. Oh. Where's that? Well, that's a grommet, but they, uh, they, they, they cut it in half to get it in there because it wasn't installed on the wiring harness. It was installed after the fact. Even after we uh, re-insulate all these wires, we should go get a fire extinguisher just in case. Yeah. Not that it helps in an electrical fire, but I just feel like it's it's good juju to have one. Uh, we're gonna be here a while. I'm under the dash. It melted all the way back up to here. Which means it could go I mean, Jesus, the whole harness could be toasted. But I think I can unplug it here and maybe make it a little easier to work on. So I managed to unplug it under the dash because it had melted all the way in there. Now we should feed those in. Hold that. Yep. I'll go on the other side and feed them, Mike. Yeah. Oh, it came out. Okay. Okay. Better? This will be oh, easier now. Oh, yeah. All right, more Sherlocking. I got the harness unplugged under the dash. And now I'm seeing wires melted. Essentially, you've got the green wire melted to the red wire, the blue wire. There's some things under here that are not, you know, amazing, like, you know, butt splices. This is supposed to be a brand new harness that's butt spliced together, and you've got two different colors butt spliced together. I don't think that's what did it. I think somewhere along here, that green wire or the red wire was rubbing on something metal until it rubbed through and grounded itself out. So the trick here is, is we don't know where exactly it happened. So we have to, every inch of the wire, pull all the cloth tape off, isolate everything with electrical tape, make darn sure nothing is still rubbing, then hook the battery up. Because if we miss even one little tiny part that's run in the fender and we hook the, and we hook the battery back up and two wires are still melted together, it starts all over again, so. We're gonna be here a while. Joy. Yeah. It's like that wire. Even right up to the connector, they're melted together. Yeah. Look, here we got three melted together. Four melted together. Mike, so what usually causes that? It's, it's a dead short. It's a dead short. You know, it's metal running, metal rubbing through the insulation of the wire and then it's grounding out, you know, a positive circuit. It's usually what causes this. You, or, you, or you overload it, but I doubt we overloaded it. You know, this car is, according to the guy I bought it from, he's only put like 500 miles on it since he kind of restored it. He had the motor rebuilt, put the trans in it, and uh, he lives, you know, near the island and just cruises it around for like coffee and stuff. He hasn't really gone on any long trips. And, uh, you know, this probably would have happened to him at some point. It just might not have been anytime soon because he wasn't about to go drive it as far as we drove it. Road trips are the best way to test your car. Find out all their weak spots. They will be exposed via the highway. Looks like a rat's nest. It is now. <laughs> yeah, it looks a lot better than it was before, actually. Yeah, it's less smoky now. <laughs> Cool it now. That wire harness is running through the inner fender and it comes all the way over here to this side of the car and I just got the bright idea to disconnect it from the alternator, the starter, and the coil and then just pull the whole harness out of the nose of the car so we can work on it on the ground and stop bending over the whole yes. time. All right, you wanna just unplug One this? One last wire to disconnect here. This whole thing comes out. Yes. We are here. Now we I've can... gotta disconnect the alternator. Yeah, once the alternator is disconnected, we can shove this thing back through the fender. We got one plug on the alternator. I wonder if on a 510, is it, does it go through the fender on factory or did that get show car done? I don't know. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing protecting it from chafing. 
on that hole in the inner fender on each end. Yeah. Like there's no grommet there. <clears throat> you know, the other thing about this is I think the factory battery, battery location is right there. Right. And with today's lightweight batteries, you don't really need to put the battery in, in the, the trunk of the car anymore. Because then you're adding 15 pounds of battery cable, you know, to the car when you could just stick a lithium battery up here, have sh nice short cables and fewer chances of things chafing and grounding out and all that. This car smells so bad now. Jess is never gonna wanna ride in it. <laughs> this smell will forever remind me of tonight. You know when they do those ads? Never smoked in. Right. <laughs> you know? We can't say that about this car anymore. This car absolutely has been smoked in. It just wasn't menthols or, you know. No, I didn't get smoked in, it got smoked out. <laughs> it didn't get smoked out. <laughs> now we can feed this through here and out, out through here. Okay. Let me get time out. Let's see what I got here. Okay. Okay. It's all on you. Yes! Okay. But at least it's not snowing. Right? And, uh, or raining. Or raining. Or lightning. Or like freezing cold, because it's really not that bad out here right now. Yeah, this isn't bad at all. We're still going snowboarding. Oh, yeah, it's toasty up here. Wherever here is. Yeah, when we that put this was back the side marker lights. When we put this back together, we're not even going to put it in the inner fender. Not yet. Just trying. We just ran into your boys Oh. Oh. You mind if I take a look? Nah, yeah. go ahead. It's a beautiful car. This is actually looking. Oh, yep. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. Girl, this looks pretty good. Oh. This whole green thing, dude, the whole green, uh, it's all marker lights is what it is. I think it chafed on the firewall. Yeah. Got the marker like circuit and. Yep. But why didn't the fuse blow? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody got a penny in there or a nail? Or... So here's, here's, I here's, look. here's a funny thing. My old 620 Datsun, yeah. it was a 76. I had multiple smoke shows under my dash in that truck. I'm a Datsun guy, I live in town, I got three roadsters. Oh, oh nice. Right. If there's anything you need that I may have. We might need a relay or <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Or, it, I don't know, it burnt it all the way up to... Burnt it all the way down. up into this plug right here. Okay. Whatever that See is. This? And I'm not sure what yeah. this plug is. That, that plug and that plug were dangling in the uh, inner fender right by the firewall of the passenger side. I don't know. I think that's the headlight relay. That one? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty it, sure the, this the, one might be like the turn signal or something. This oh, green man, wire is straight up there. Holy yeah. Crap. And it's both okay. wires going into the running lights here. Oh man, you want me to go get my wiring kit? If you don't mind, that would be huge. That would we be went amazing. to, uh, my son's buying the green wire. Okay. So if we yeah, could we put it. we ran into them at Riley's. Oh. And we left and I was like, dude, we gotta go see if we can help. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> if, uh, if we can make a new connector on there. I feel a lot better than just running electrical tape up in there. So Mike's wife just called us and said she's having spaghetti dinner. How are you guys doing? I said, well, we're having spaghetti dinner too. Yeah, I sent her back a photo of this mess we got going on. <laughs> but on the bright side, we were able to get the entire harness out from under the dash and out of the engine yes. compartment so we could sit here and do this on the ground, not bent over the car. So things are looking up. And this guy just rolled in here with this awesome, was it a... What was it? I don't know if it's a 64 Dart. It was a 64 a Dart, Dart yeah. convertible. Yeah. And uh, he's also a Datsun guy. And he went home to go get a kit to what actually make those OEM Japanese connectors. So things are looking up, man. The funny part is I oh. just texted the dude that sold it to us like an hour ago. I was uh -huh. like, dude, thanks for selling me this thing. It runs you great. You should take a picture of this right now. <laughs> I was like, it runs great. And then as soon as we switched drivers, fire. <laughs> Jinxed myself. Ah, a little update for you guys at home. Um, we've isolated the major problem to the parking light circuit. All these green wires, super unhappy. And uh, I think we're just going to unpin it from that connector right there. 
take it out completely, tape up the harness, and probably hit the road. As long as nothing else, you know, this is the entire harness out of the engine compartment and it goes under the dash and plugs in. As long as nothing else under the dash got melted, uh, I think we're okay. Okay, let's yeah. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, he's got the goods. Oh, nice. Yeah. Play around with enough old dots that you gotta buy this stuff. That thing is beautiful, man. He didn't tell me it was 100% restored. Oh, it's not. I'm getting it her there. Though. Sure looks good. Well, thank you. That's the same plug, isn't it? So, yeah. We've determined that this circuit is a running light circuit. Okay. So I think we'll just repin these ones here and leave this out for now. Okay. Just take the running lights out on the front side. Because right. that's pretty much everything that burned was the running lights. Yeah. Right. So we don't even have to unpin this. We can just chop the wires, put new connectors on it, shove it in there. Yeah. Just do one at a time and it'll be cool. Long story short, drive a cool car, you meet cool people. Yeah. Our Dotson attracted us to Jason. Who's Who, another Dotson guy? Who's got his own killer Dotson and all the factory plugs and terminals to actually fix this mess, which is great. And uh, all we're gonna do is get rid of the parking light circuit for now and put new plugs on to replace the melted ones and back on the road. Real strippers. All right, so one at a time, let's cut one wire. Do this one. All right, I think right. that one's good. One down. Let's wanna do, do that one too? Yeah, let's do this melty one. Is that another six? Yes. Look at this, we broke down on our Dotson fellow Datsun lover stopped and rescued us with some hard to find vintage Japanese electrical connectors. And dude, his 1600 is awesome. This thing's so cool. Oh wow, she's a beaut. I don't think this one's got the same electrical hazards ours do. <laughs> oh, we'll be on the road again soon. Thanks Jason. It's so cool. Yeah, buddy. He just brought us some very much needed parts. Yeah. All right, back to work on the Datsuns. Car people are the best. Ah, dude, Datsun people rule. I, I think we, we are got, uh, kind of like, this is kind of like the here. middle of almost nowhere out here. We're driving, we left, and I looked at Jordan and I went, looked on my phone and I said, dude, there's no gas stations for like 10 miles, right? Did we get gas when we were here? We did, we stopped and got okay, gas. Good. I didn't want to but forget I'm that like, part. Rewire right? the whole car and run out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be great. But I'm like, we're driving along and there's nothing out here. There's no gas stations for a long ways. I'm like, Dots I saw a sign that said, everywhere. gas station, whoop. Thought some people are everywhere. All right, let's tape up melted wires and then we're out of here. Look, we got fresh new connectors and the ones that were totally barbecued. This one's new. And uh, we'll tape up the melted wires. Forget about having parking lights. Hopefully we have headlights and get out of here. Well, let's not even tape up the whole harness, just the melted parts, because we're going to have to, we're going to have to deal with this later anyway. Okay. So let's just tape the sections that are. We could put bands through it though. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. just tape bands to hold it together. And then the section going across the radiator, I do want to tape though. This is everything we cut out. This is everything we splice back together. Now we're gonna put it back in the car, plug everything in, hopefully it starts, hopefully it runs, hopefully we have headlights and taillights, and hopefully no more smoke. All right, party people. That is how that grommet is supposed to fit in there. Look, it's now locked in place and the wire harness is snug, he doesn't want to move. There's a lip in there and the lip is now on the inside. This was not how this was before. So now this shouldn't chafe. And for the sake of saving time, we are not gonna run this show car style through the inner fender. We're gonna run it right here, across where it needs to be. That way if we have another problem, we can access all this stuff pretty easily. So let's plug everything in and uh, see if we can drive. Okay, our fuse box is hooked up. Yeah. Now these two things should be grounded, and they're not. So if we can figure out a way to run a ground wire to them to something else on the car, because I think the ground holes and wherever those used to be mounted, I think those holes are gone. I think they've been shaved off the firewall or the inner yeah, fender or something. Much. 
two hours in a gas station blocking the pump or those people but to be honest there's nobody really here um just rewired the entire engine compartment and by rewire i mean cut out all the melted stuff and taped up about 38 or 39 different splices where wires melted together and uh, we've eliminated the running light circuit completely up front hopefully now that the grommet is installed in the firewall properly and i think we've eliminated all the parts where it's grounding out when i hook this up no more smoke Will it run? Will it have headlights? I have no idea. But right now, step one, will we have smoke? Okay. All right, we got headlights. Good news. Okay. All right. So we can't touch it. We can. We won't get any high beams. I don't care. No headlights. Turn those off. Let's see if we can start the car. Uh, if we didn't fry anything ignition-wise, it's going to work. Oh, we're back. Uh, give me headlights. No smoke. Let me check the back. Didn't burn the car to the ground. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's, uh, is that smoke? No, it's not. We're good. We're good. We're good. Whoa! All right. This is, uh, this is what melted. The parking light circuit. Yeah. Only the front ones, though. No fuse. Oh, did we check rears? No fuse blue. Did we uh, check the rear lights? Uh, they're lit up on the side, so. Oh, All right. Yeah. Like, this is literally... Bare wire, bare wire, and completely melted wire. But, yeah. It's late. Let's go. We got another two and a half, three hours of driving. Finally, Jordan's second first test drive. Whoops. There we go. Oh, look at that. We got headlights. We got a running engine. Yeah, buddy. Made it. We made it. Let's We're check, here. Let's check in and go to sleep. Tomorrow we ride the mountain. <sighs> it's the next day, Joe. You're bundled we up. We made it last night. It is a little chilly here. Um, it's beautiful, oh. though. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't think there was like, well, I don't know, I'm from California. These are mountains, but they're hills. They're hills. Um, I'm excited. They're hills big enough to ride down. It was like, what, 1.30, something like that when we got here in the morning? Morning's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to hook up our anti-theft device? I did. We're good. Oh. Alarm is turned off. Oh, alarm's turned off. Oh, okay. Well, the car's let's... ready to be stubborn. Let's go then. <laughs> we're going to Sugar Mountain to go snowboarding. Started at the beach, now we're here. Woo! A little chilly out today. It's also raining, which means we're going to be snowboarding in slush, but I don't care at all about snowboarding and slush. I learned to snowboard in New York on ice, so I'll take slush any day of the week and twice on Sunday. That's all right, I learned how to snowboard in California on rocks. <laughs> You're like, I see some white stuff, head for that. Oh, right. I hit a rock. <laughs> oh, smooth. <laughs> all right, will she start without a choke? Not when she's in gear. All right. Oh, look at that. Let me get the cold start. Oh. Come on, baby. There we go. Yeah. That it. fresh wiring job works. Right? I've already coached, coached my son. I'm like, if you have your helmet on and your giant Terminator glasses, nobody can really make out your face, so I can film you snowboarding and put it in the video. <laughs> he is so excited about that. Oh, really? Oh, he's like, you can film me snowboarding and put it in YouTube? I'm like, yeah, buddy, I can't. 
Because normally I don't, I don't put my kids in this. They're too young. <laughs> you know. Safety. It's about well, safety. Plus, I ain't trying to make money off my kids. But I know this would make them happy, so we'll do it. Can't tell if the sunglasses are making it better or worse. Um, better. It's taking the glare off. Oh, we gotta stop at a rental. Uh, the rental is at the mountain. Okay, cool. We just had to get to Sugar Mountain in the parking lot. Technically, we have made it. And then we walk up the hill to the lodge okay. and uh, rent you guys some gear. No, we're on the slopes, bro. We're gonna turn right here. Yes, this looks familiar. There's the sign for Sugar Mountain. Dude, we're getting close. Sugar Mountain, skiing. Yeah, buddy. They mean snowboarding. I'm sure they do. Snowboarding. Oh, look at I see, actually see snow slopes. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Wow. Right, right there, bro. <clears throat> they blow a lot of snow here. Right, this is the why, which is why even though it's been raining, we're going to be able to go snowboarding. Turn on my certain signals just in case. Maybe a miracle will happen and they'll do something. <laughs> yeah, we don't have turn <clears throat> signals. We don't have high beams. Um, we, we don't, don't have, have front marker lights anymore. We don't have a temp gauge. No. Um, that door lock doesn't do anything. Oh, really? From the outside. Yeah, it's, it's like not connected. Oh. What else do we need to work on at home? We need to fix the shifters. You don't knuckle, knuckle smash the dash um, every time you go for second or fourth. Other than that, the thing's mint. Yeah. Oh, the wipers. It'd be great to make the wipers work since oh, yeah. they're, they're here, you know? Like blast me. Well, hopefully that wire that broke right off the connector has been the problem the whole time. Yeah, I think... We could easily find out. We can hook a power probe to it and see. Yeah, I think the reason the wipers weren't working for that guy is because that wire melted right off. stretch we have 0.4 miles to go we are so close bought a Datsun at the beach drove it up a mountain only caught on fire once Not momentarily <laughs> oh smoky. the good thing is it didn't explode smoky or just call it smoky I think that's the name of the car yeah smoky Dog. A little smoky. Upper parking lot's full? No way. We gotta park down here. Right, I'm gonna say it's a busy day, Michael. Dang, that is a long walk. Really? Yep. No shuttle? In the rain? I don't know. Last time I was here, there was no shuttle. Oh, there's a shuttle right there. Oh, good. Because that is a long walk. Nope. They don't give two Fs. I think I'll be uh, bringing my. Goggles. E-brake. <laughs> you made it, bro. Yes. I swear. We still got like five hours to go, but technically make it all the way. But we made it here. This is the part that matters. Yeah, this is technically the mountain. Yes. All we got to do now mm -hmm. is go up and down the mountain. We're here. You ready? We made it. We made it. Like there's the bunny slope. Little kids learning. Super cool. Jordan's first ever ride in a Datsun 510. Second time snowboarding. Give me a good day. Any predictions? There's a lot of people down here. I hope I don't crash into them. I'm a big body, probably the biggest body on this little <laughs> slope right here. And I will destroy any of these kids. So let's hope for the best. Yeah, this try looks to get, like- Try to get a strike. This looks like the strike, 405 right, right here. Right down here is golden hour. <laughs> <sighs> Noah's already ditched us. He's out. Look, there he goes. My kid's like, what are you nerds doing? He's like, come on guys, they know how to yeah. snowboard. All right, strap in. Six. JC's ready to go. You're doing it. I don't know when the last time JC was on a board. Jordan's done this once, but his savage best friend just took him right up the mountain on a lift and just threw him to the wolves. Today, uh, we're going to start out here on a smaller slope and actually give him a lesson. 
because we care. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, buddy. My kid rips. This is a proud dad moment. He's like, whatever, nerds, get out of the way. I got this. Oh, yeah, switch, whatever. <laughs> He's already better than me. No, maybe not. I'm not going to give him that. I won't tell him that out loud. You can do it! Jordan, how's it going, buddy? Not good. Not good? Come on! He's struggling to get up. You got this. Alright, you're gonna lean forward, you're gonna exaggerate it, and you're gonna pull the back leg up the mountain. Once you get all the way around, you can go all the way down the mountain with those. You can get used to that feeling. You can just slide down and all the way down. Remember how I said not missing Jordan sliding into the deck of the resort. <laughs> we are at the mountain. We just gave Jordan a snowboarding lesson and now we're riding the chairlift up to make our first run down the mountain. Uh oh, on your left, on your left. So fun. Dude, the snow is great. Woo! This snow is awesome! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I found the hole. I think so. My left foot is unhappy. Yeah, my left foot is swelling up. There's a hole here. <laughs> There's a giant hole. Oh my God, my left foot is jacked. <sighs> oh, ow, 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 ow. Hey Mike, you're supposed to be riding that thing. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was having a lot of fun too. Then I found this really great. So you weren't? Then I found this really great bank to go up to the top and carve off of, except uh, there was nothing on the other side of it. <laughs> I found a ditch that I think went all the way to China. And your nose went. Urgh! I was having so much fun and uh, we took the high speed lift all the way to the top of the mountain, we were bombing down it and uh, it was really foggy, it was hard to see and I think it was my second run, I'd already gone down once and there's this right side of the trail, there's these banks, awesome banks and I went up one, carved it, came down, went up the next one, carved it and then there was just a giant hole on the other side of it, I just tumbled over it. And the board caught the ground, twisted my leg the wrong direction, and I had a uh, tell me I pulled a tendon. Uh, so ankles really swollen, and I ended up walking halfway down the mountain, and then the ski patrol uh, put my happy ass in this toboggan and towed me down. It was great. So a little ice, a little ibuprofen, and we'll be good. All right, everybody. This is it. We're done. We're leaving that mountain up there. My limp has gotten much better. Pretty sure I can still work a clutch. 
and uh, we're about to hit the road and get out of here. Just do a little systems check real quick. Yep, there's still a motor under that car. And our uh, homemade puke tank, still intact. Oh, dude, but the level, it sucked some It sucked some coolant back in. That is working. It's not a puke tank, that's a recovery tank. Let's make sure we have dinosaur lube in here. Yep, got dinosaur lube. You know what that means. They're Audi 5000. That's right, kicking it old school. Leaving Sugar Mountain, heading back to Georgia. Dude, it's snowing right now. It is. <laughs> it's snowing. It's legit snowing right now. Perfect. It's a perfect time to leave. Bye, Sugar Mountain. We out. Dude. Epic trip. Yeah. Not bad. We were at the beach yesterday. Yup. Maybe fresh seafood. Saw alligators. Saw alligators. Got the car on fire. <laughs> Not at the beach. Went snowboarding. Crashed. Got a ride in a toboggan halfway down the hill after I got done walking. I, you know, honestly, I'm not jealous of your ride down the mountain. It was fun, dude. <laughs> it was genuinely care. fun. I'm not jealous of your ride down the mountain. The difference was, you know, you. I've whenever, never gotten that ride, and I'm hoping I don't. I've never had it until today, and whenever I see someone taking that ride in the toboggan, you know, they're strapped down and they're laying oh, yeah, down, yeah, and yeah. you're yeah. like, oh, they're dead. <laughs> I wasn't strapped down. I was like sitting up, holding on, got one arm on the board, and I was like, this is kind of fun. It's very smooth. <laughs> you know, it beats the heck out of walking. <laughs> you walked a long ways down. I uh, dude. The, the worst part was- to walk up the hill to that one and they would let you on the lift? Yeah, that was the worst part is I, I, I was like, I, I can't ride toe side. I'm jacked, you know? So I walked down probably three eighths of a mile. Then I walked up a hill to a chairlift and they wouldn't let me ride the chairlift down. And I was like, oh no. Well, you got a fun ride down the mountain and ride the chairlift down. Dude, oh, in hindsight? Yeah, the chairlift? Forget it. I'll have you know. Clark, Forget it. I'll have you know, I was there ready to go at the bottom of the lift with camera waiting for you to ride it down. <laughs> Dude, I'm so <laughs> bummed you didn't have the footage of me because when they, you know, the guy, he was on a snowboard. It was sick, right? And he's holding on to the handles and he's got the toboggan and I'm riding it. And, uh, as we're coming down, I didn't know he had a whistle. And every now and again, he was blowing it, letting people know he was coming, right? Well, when we get down to the bottom of the mountain, I didn't know it, but the um, the EMT station is right at the bottom of the bunny slope, which is looks like the 405 at three o'clock in the oh, afternoon. So he's just so laying on the whistle and all these people are looking at me and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> we like parted the seas and went through there, dude. It was epic. It was so fun. Bye, Sugar Mountain. Adios, till next time. Back to Georgia. on my snowboard. I'm now at a surgeon's office to find out how we're gonna fix me. I already went to urgent care and uh, I got a splint put on. That's uh, how I found out I broke my leg. I didn't know it was broken, so I sprained it. But they took an x-ray and said, I broke my fibula, which the fibula is do do do. It's this one right here, it's on the outside. Uh, let's see, yeah. I broke that bone right there. So, um, I'm learning a lot here because uh, basically I fractured it, right? I'm 
it probably looks just like this. And then they're showing how to fix it. And so it sounds like I might need surgery, but I don't know. We'll see what the doc says. I guess he'll confirm that. I am uh, with Dr. Wall, who has given me the best news ever. And I'm gonna have him repeat it because my memory is horrible and I'm not a doctor. But we are here at the Georgia Bone and Joint Clinic in Cartersville, Georgia. And I just found out I don't need surgery. <laughs> um, doc, can you tell me why? Yeah, so here's your fracture right here. It's a distal fibula fracture, but overall your ankle mortise is well maintained. This distance is the same as this distance. So this bone is not sliding back from out underneath your ankle. So that looks good. You look good from the lateral view as well and on your AP too. So as long as it's not a bimalleolar or trimalleolar and your ankle mortise is well maintained, you're in good shape. So you'll be in your cam boot and um, you can be uh, for the first week or two, weight bearing is tolerated, but, um, or sorry, non-weight bearing, but after that, you can be weight bearing is tolerated. Oh, dude, that's such good news. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.